the way. Okay. Who wants to take this? Danny, you or me? Yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. Okay. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Danny. Uh, I am a grateful member of Al Anon. Um, and I'm also, I'm based out in Los Angeles. Um, Nick and I are both, uh, on a committee called Young at Heart in al -Anon. We're putting on a convention that is geared towards al to identify as Young at Heart. Uh, all are welcome. And, uh, it's been a really amazing experience to be a part of. Um, I will just leave it at that. I don't know. We're just introducing ourselves, right, Nick? <laughs> Is that it, Yvonne? We're yeah. only introducing ourselves. I, I thought we were doing fifteen minutes each. Yvonne, can you... I'm talking, but I'm muted. So yeah, go introduce yourself. Explain to people what Young and Hard is about because they've been asking me questions, and okay. I even got some emails over it. And okay. um, yeah, it's your hour. Do it, okay. please. I, I thought we were doing fifteen minutes each, and then sharing. You can do that too. Okay. Um, no I'll just introduce myself after that. I'll go for 15 minutes and then Danny, you want to go for 15 minutes after that? Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so as Danny said, we are Waiha, Young at Heart and al -Anon. We, um, I, I am the program chair for the conference. We're a conference. Um, the cool part is that, so in Young People in AA it has a huge outreach, right? Young people, if anybody here is familiar with Young People in AA, they are ginormous. International, uh, you know, outreach all over and reached to all kinds of communities uh, for a lot younger audience. And when I came in, um, there weren't many young people. Uh, I came in at 13 to Alateen, transitioned at 18 to Al-Anon, and had uh, just wandered the universe uh, for about 10 years in Al-Anon, trying to find uh, my people and people that were young like me and, and like to do crazy stuff, but still in recovery. And so... We have a meeting on, uh, in Tarzana, LA, uh, Los Angeles, um, and then that on, on Wednesday nights, and then that sprouted into a young at Hard and Allen on conference. Uh, and we have all kinds of silly um, events. Uh, if you're interested, we have uh, we'll we'll put the the information in the chat for uh, for the details for the conference. We have a website, and um, we do like spelling bees, like slang spelling bees. We do um, talent shows. We do all kinds of events that are just geared towards silliness and fun. Um, but recovery is, is based around everything we do. That, that, I just want to get that clear. Like, there's no <laughs> ambiguity about that. Um, and it's cool. And so, uh, you know, if you're young, I always tell people, if you're young or young at heart in Al-Anon, um, if you've ever felt young in Al-Anon, uh, <laughs> yeah, welcome. Um, you know, we, as a committee, we've done, uh, the fifth tradition, you know, is um, very specifically, I'm going to read it. Uh, I have how al -Anon works here at my disposal. Uh, each al -Anon family group has one purpose, to help families of alcoholics. We do this by practicing the 12 steps of AA ourselves, by encouraging and understanding our alcoholic relatives, and by welcoming and giving comfort to families of alcoholics. Uh, I love the first part. It says, the essence of all healing is love. And the fifth tradition demonstrates the loving nature of the Al-Anon program. In Al-Anon, we learn to love ourselves as well as others. This often means changing both our attitudes and our behaviors in all that we do every day. It means putting an end to lingering hostilities and adopting the attitude of tolerance, courtesy, and appreciating or appreciation in our daily interactions with uh, family and friends. Uh, and it says, and I'll just, this one part says, this love is confirmed by a group's purpose. And, you know, this committee, this particular committee, by the way, Young at Heart and Al-Anon was an Al-Anon designation by WSO about 10 years ago. Uh, we, 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 we actually use it. It's a designation under Al-Anon. Um, but the, the point is, is that this committee has done uh, so much in terms of uh, outreaching to the community. Uh, last year, we had in specific um, a... Uh, and we had we did a lot of outreach to facilities. We did the HNI, so hospital institutions. We spoke at rehabs. Uh, we spoke at different areas, you know, to try to carry the message to those affected by alcoholism in those areas um, to welcome them, to give them comfort, you know. And then also a lot of times people we've had a lot of people. Um, I could say from my experience that came in young that felt like oh wow there weren't at this time 
there weren't a lot of people, you know, they didn't see a lot of people their age in meetings. Or even if they came in at like 25 and they're now in their 60s. I know somebody who's so excited that we exist because he, when he, you know, 25, 30 years ago, he didn't see anybody near who looked like him. And so now he's just excited to be around young people uh, <laughs> to get back his, his experience almost. Uh, so it's really been quite an amazing experience. Uh, I grew up in alcoholism. Um, I came into Al-Anon, you know, after Alateen, uh, 18 years old. Uh, my mom, my dad was a drug dealer. My mom's an alcoholic. And um, I was affected by somebody who was an untreated Al-Anon who was uh, violent for a long time with me. An untreated Al-Anon very specifically. And I say that because a lot of us in Al-Anon have a hard time. You know, we don't talk about our own issues that we do, things that we've done, you know, and I became a violent, raging, lunatic Al-Anon, you know, as I grew up. And I have to acknowledge that. And I had to make amends for my behavior and I had to work on making amends to my mom. And I had to do a lot of things that, uh, because I, of my behavior. And so a lot of times in our young people in Al-Anon meetings and Waiha specifically has a really interesting perspective because a lot of us aren't always married to alcoholics. Um, a lot of us are people who have some, a lot of sisters and brothers of alcoholics, um, people who grew up in alcoholism, a lot of, and so we have taken a real focus on the focus on our own self and our recovery from our actions. And a lot of times when Al-Anons come in to our meetings or our fellowship, they're shocked to see that we are insane and have fun being insane, <laughs> you know, if you ever, and, 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 and it's really cool because uh, we had, a, we had a girl come into a meeting, um, you know, on the, on, on the comfort and, and, you know, giving comfort to friends and friends of alcoholics. We had a girl come into our meeting uh, this last Wednesday, come into a, a young people's meeting and, and she was, her and her sister were just besides themselves. I mean, dealing with alcoholism in this moment, you know, in one of the hardest times in our recent history that we've all ever been through, um, you know, in isolation and all the other stuff, she came in just beside herself with alcoholism in her family. And um, look, she looked at us and was like, oh my God, you guys are so cute and look so fun and sane. <laughs> and we all know each other. We looked at each other and like, you have no clue. Like that, and that's great. Like, honestly, that's, it's one of those things where you go, yes, we look like we have fun and we do have fun, but we get to do it because we have recovery because we work the steps. We have sponsors. We have, we have fellowship, which is what this, this, the fifth tradition speaks to. We have fellowship and we get to care and we get to then go, we know what it's like to be you. And we have been that insane. We have been those crying people. We have been affected by alcoholism, but we can have fun also. You know, even dealing with this absolute insanity, um, the, the essence of love is there. You know, the essence of, of kindness and healing is there. And and that's, for me, the um, the essence of it. Because I sat in the rooms for a long time and people would invite me to meetings or they invite me to coffee afterwards and they invite me to um, to different things. And, and I would go because I while we have done everything to make it easier for people to feel welcome socially in Al-Anon and to identify and, and have a place to belong if they feel different or too young because they go to meetings where a lot of people are of different ages. Um, we by no means, we, we, we welcome everybody. And on top of that, um, you know, we really understand. And so, you know, I, I was willing to do the work when I felt unwanted and loved in the lonely meetings, when I was the only guy in my 20s, when I would sit in the room and have people tell me that, oh, Nick, you're so lucky you're here so young, you know, in my early 20s. And that was hard because I didn't feel lucky. I didn't go to Al-Anon going, you know what, I'm, you know, life is amazing. Uh, and, and, you know, my friends think I'm so cool uh, because I'm now in this these meetings. Like, that was not why I went to Al-Anon. I went to Al-Anon because I knew there was something there that I needed, but I didn't know what, but I didn't feel a part of. I did not feel a part of. Like, that's just, and I'm not trying to be disrespect Al-Anon. It was me, but I really couldn't identify. I just could not identify. And so I, I had to be willing to stay in the uncomfortability for a very long time until I got my own recovery. Like, that's my story. You know, when I was in meetings feeling really uncomfortable, feeling like I was the only one, I was a special snowflake. I mean, mind you, I'll just put it this way at 22 or 21, you know, after my Friday night Al-Anon meeting, uh, I'd be in the streets, street racing. Okay. <laughs> It'd be like fast and the furious. And I'm leaving my Al-Anon up my Al-Anon meeting in my muscle car out to hit the streets. 
like that was it. That was my life. Okay. So, and those guys, all those guys weren't going to Al-Anon and you know, so I would be, I, but I had to be willing to go. The point is, is that even though it was uncomfortable and I didn't feel a part of, I, I, for some reason kept going. And so when people, a lot of times I have a lot of people who, who will look at what we have in our young people's outreach and our YHA conference. And they look at what we're doing and they're like, man, I wish I had it. You know, I don't know if I can keep coming back if, you know, because you has what you have and it's amazing. I always still encourage people to keep coming back, even through the uncomfortability, even through those, those unwanted, unloved and alone feelings. Because when I got my recovery, when I got my steps, when I got my sponsor and I read the How Alan on Works literature and I read from Survival to Recovery and I really dug into what the program looks like, what Alan on looks like in the literature, then I personally felt better. I personally was more confident and comfortable in my relationships, in my relation to Al Anon. I was then, um, you know, I could then actually easy, carry the message easier to people who I knew felt like me. You know, so I, I don't like I I'm not one to say that, you know, just because you don't have a young people's outreach or you don't you feel different, like it's not worth going. I am not one to say that because I had that internally for a very long time. Uh, I really did. And uh, then when um, and then, you know, when this whole young people thing started, it was just like the icing on the cake. <laughs> That's the thing. It was like I did get I had the fellowship. I had the friends. And then, you know, I was the, I'm still the old guy who has time now. You know, like I'm the the guy who's older than everybody who's been around, who's the, you know, old, because I'm 38 and, and I, you know, I've never left. And so I was the old, you know, I'm still the old, almost the old curmudgeon in meetings sometimes. Uh, and and wh while going to other al meetings and people are going, oh, my God, you're so young. You're so lucky you're in so young. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, great. Now I'm, <laughs> I'm in the middle of <laughs> <laughs> I'm nowhere now, right? Like I'm still on my own island. Congratulations. Um, but you know, but but the, like I said, the recovery is what matters, and and the love and the out and the and the, the welcoming to friends and families of alcoholics of all backgrounds. You know, I'm looking through here tonight, and I'm just going to tell you, I'm looking at all of you. Okay, so you know, if you're blank, I'm sorry, I, I don't get to see your lovely face, but you know, I see fa faces from Canada, South Africa. I see people from Ireland. I see London. Uh, you know, I see you. And the cool part is that we're all welcome here, you know, and and the welcome and the love is so cool because, you know, if you it, it's it's interesting. Al-Anon has so many perspectives and it there's a Al-Anon itself is going through a lot of change. And, and Al-Anon itself is also trying to welcome and be open to welcoming everybody. To, to give that love and kindness to friends and families of alcoholics from all backgrounds. And that's the amazing thing. Um, you know, I, I, I really value that and I value that more men are coming in also because there's no men, <laughs> like there've been very little men, you know, 15 years ago, if you were an al on 15 years ago, uh, and you're in a meet, I was in meetings full of a hundred people, you know, or 80 people, I'd see like four or five men, you know, maybe it was like, Oh, there's another guy. And, 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 um, now, you know, some of those meetings are, have a lot, the, the numbers are changing and, you know, I just want to say that I'm really grateful to be asked to be here today to talk about the fifth tradition, because in the in the fifth, when it comes for me, the 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 core understanding of what we have is here, we're powerless over our reaction to alcohols. You know, and I say that very distinctively um, because a lot of us will say a lot of things about the reason why people come to Al-Anon. Um, my reason I come to Al-Anon is because I don't react well to alcoholism. You know, my reaction to alcoholism uh, growing up in it did not leave me happy, joyous and free. But my my goal is to be happy, joyous and free. So those reactions I have, the quote unquote, you know, people use the word triggers, whatever. Those those are my when I have to then when I am then in that place, I then have the opportunity to look at my reactions, to look at where I felt slighted, where I was. um offended and then either a make amends for my behavior because i acted out or whatever the case is um or b you know really look at my part and what i'm doing and, and all the things that come with that and you know when that happens that also gives fr comfort to friends and families because that gives an example you know when al and i we really i try to we try to live these principles and be an example of recovery for those who who may not 
uh, I get it. And I like to, when people come to me and I'm a real kind of a raw person. So when somebody comes to me, like some people and they're like, this crazy shit happened. And Oh my God, this happened. And they're beating themselves over the head because they're unhappy or mad about a situation that happened to them. You know, the way I give comfort to them is I'll look at them and go, that sucks. It's real simple. It sucks. Like it's okay. It's okay. You know, the awareness, the acceptance and the action. The awareness is this sucks. I don't like it. And you know what? That's fair. Often that happens. We have to sit there and deal, you know, and then comes the acceptance and then comes the action. You know, and we don't have to beat ourselves over the head with slogans. Right. But I come, that's for me, how I try to comfort people is that when they come in and they're reeling and they're dealing with alcoholism and they're trying to figure out what to do, you know, I, as an, as an old timer who, can throw all those slogans and all the stuff at them and all the recovery things. And sometimes it feel like they could be under attack. I get to go, no, you know what? That sucks. Alcoholism sucks. And, um, I get it. And, and, and you're welcome here. And there's a way to get better all in, you know, over time. Um, but that's for me, the important piece is the compassion and the love that we do have, even though we don't display it perfectly. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I do, but when it comes to the, doing what we do, especially with the young at heart and Allen on committee, uh, we are we are our, our, our primary purpose. We understand it, and we we welcome everybody. And if you're here today, I'm glad uh, for this ala whatever without borders. Um, you know, thanks Yvonne for reaching out. Um, I'm grateful to be here. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a very grateful member of Al Anon. And my, my if my if my talk was a little off today, unfocused, I have been I, personally just on a personal note, I've been running around like a madman for the last week, quite literally. Um, and so I'm like, today's like my, I'm kind of recouped today. Uh, cause it's been out, insane out here in LA and I've been participating, you know, I've been trying to do stuff. So, um, I'm really grateful. Um, you know, I'm still keeping my commitments and I'm still, an, I'm a grateful member of Alan on, and, um, I'm really grateful you're all here. So thanks. Yay. Thank you, Nick. Um, I love you. Thank you for your share. Um, I guess I'll just go. Um, so again, hi, my name's Danny. Uh, it's wild. I did not realize that there would be 200 people in this meeting. So hi to everyone around the world. Um, it's very cool. It's, um, yeah, very cool to be here. Um, I just wanted to read Tradition 5 one more time, um, just to like center myself. So Tradition 5 says, each al family group has but one purpose, to help families of alcoholics. We do this by practicing the 12 steps of AA ourselves, by encouraging and understanding our alcoholic relatives, and by welcoming and giving comfort to families of alcoholics. So I just want to start by saying that like, I, I came into the rooms just like two and a half years ago, and um, I came because I was with a sober alcoholic and um, she told me I was crazy and I was like, you're crazy. And she told me I needed to go to Al-Anon and I went to spite her. And then I like cried like the whole first meeting. <laughs> I just was like, didn't realize that like my brain, the way my like thought life works or like how my brain works was something that was experienced on like a broader level. <laughs> like I just didn't I've always just avoided like conflict and um avoided like uncomfortable feelings so I've, I've never this has has been a really beautiful place to come head to head with um my character defects and um yeah I mean when my ex told me like it's okay like it's just one of your character defects I lost my mind because I just thought I was literally perfect like I really like it's shocking to me now <laughs> that I ever thought that <laughs> about myself but I did I thought I was um like a martyr like I did everything for everyone else like worked for a nonprofit, and my whole life was about advocating for um like the vulnerable and um I really identified with that and so I I'm grateful for this tradition because, um, because I didn't feel like I belonged in the rooms for a long time. I would hear people share about, um, 
how they would pour alcohol down drains, how they, um, you know, were counting drinks and were obsessing about like literally obsessing about alcohol. And I've, I've not had that experience. Um, you know, I, and so I didn't, feel like I really belonged. I was like, I'm with a sober alcoholic, so it's fine. What I've come to learn is that, um, is that alcoholism is a mental illness. One of the symptoms is drinking. I am affected by alcoholism and that's, I mean, all over my mental health history. Like it's, I feel like it's literally a mental illness that like I have in a different way. Like I don't have this phenomenon of craving, um, alcohol, but I do crave like mood altering people and like I obsess about things um, that don't serve me. And, um, and eventually I, as I heard people share their experiences, I realized that I uh, grew up in alcoholism and I, I didn't even really know it. I just thought it was normal. Um, I just thought it was like, I literally just thought I was like, it's my, my mom's just Puerto Rican. Like that's just what it is. Like, doesn't your family have a pinata at Christmas with like nips and male thongs in them? And that's not your family tradition. Like, um, but that's my family's tradition. And I thought it was cultural and maybe some of it is, but I've basically, um, realized like that, like the physical and like emotional abuse, like growing up, um, you know, it, it, a part of it is, is just alcoholism. And, um, and what that did was I, the way my mind worked before Al-Anon is like, um, I, if someone was angry, I honestly would like just burst into tears because if a parent was angry growing up, like that meant I was going to get the belt or I was going to have to watch one of my brothers get the belt or, um, you know, just, it, it just meant like my physical safety was at risk. So I would just like, have a meltdown like and now today I'm grateful to like have the awareness like Nick mentions like like awareness is like the first step to me realizing like you know the the things that I experienced growing up like that's different like that's like like we're children like no child should have to go through that like that's no that's no child's fault but today as an adult like those survival skills that I learned, they harm people. And it, I was living in this victim mentality, like literally until I reached Al-Anon and I realized that, um, that, you know, me, it's, it's not okay anymore for me to just, um, avoid, avoid like conflict or, um, getting in trouble by lying. Like I, I did that like to survive all the time growing up. I lied like through my teeth constantly. Um, like, like we would like get, we would get beaten if we like finish all the orange juice. And then, so it was like, we were all like covering each other's asses and like, it was, it was crazy. And, and today, like it's a really toxic trait for me to lie um, in a relationship because I'm afraid, I'm afraid of like someone's, um, response like that's me like trying to ma- manipulate and control um, a situation like someone's feelings that they're entitled to and so um, so I learned a lot about my own like gross shadow self like nasty traits that like you know like compassion and love like I know where they came from and um, but working a fourth step has been uh, really powerful and, um, and yeah, I'm, you know, I, that first meeting I went to, I heard, a, it was like such a God shot because, um, I also, I grew up in a religion that's homophobic and I grew up in a house that's homophobic and my parents like, you know, they're homophobic. So I, I had a really strong devotion with like a power of my understanding growing up um, and as like, I came to know myself more, I started to feel more and more like conflicted and like unloved and unworthy. And like, there would never be like any kind of spiritual presence in a relationship that I like n- am naturally like drawn to. And, um, and so it was, I honestly, like, I call it spiritual trauma because it's still like, 
when I go to like pride parades and I see like the churches that come through on floats saying like, this is the gay the Lord has made like that. Like I like want to cry. Like every time I see that, because um, I still feel like I still feel that. And I am, I'm still working on overcoming that and like literally creating a power of my own understanding that loves me and like wants and is in my like romantic relationships. And um, when I, when I walked into the Wednesday night young people's meeting, it was like, it was, uh, it was another God shot moment because I had been in program for six months by then, um, just going to meetings and not practicing steps. So I didn't have a sponsor. I wasn't really, I was still very suspicious. I'm like, I don't want to fall into like another situation where I'm like deeply disappointed. Um, but then when I walked into that, that meeting, that young people's meeting, um, it was their anniversary meeting. So it was like a big potluck and there were people in like, onesie pajamas and like celebrating and I was like oh my god the cult is real <laughs> um but then I met uh this woman in a unicorn onesie and she was there with her wife and I was just like like I had like no choice over the words that came out of my mouth like she was pointing out all these people that could be sponsors and I was like can you be my sponsor <laughs> and um it's been like a really beautiful um experience because I um I do feel like the tradition, I mean, I do feel welcomed and comforted, you know, by these rooms and, um, and specifically like the Waiha group, because it's, um, it's just really diverse. Like there's, um, it feels, it feels like a safe space and, um, and, um, yeah, like, like I've had, I, I, I left, I left my alcoholic. I, I, you know, what I realized that I was doing was I was, um, I just saw, I just saw you guys like at the podium, like your, you AA and al speakers, like talking about how you were miserable for years and then you worked the steps and you use the tools and you overcame it and have this loving, beautiful relationship. And I wanted that so badly that I, I mean, I really did work like, I picked up so many tools and I'm so grateful to that relationship because it brought me to Al-Anon and I have like a whole group of friends that I can't, I mean, I've slept on your guys' couches and you guys have answered calls at two in the morning. You guys have been there for me in a way that I have never experienced. I like have not experienced unconditional love like this in my whole life. (laughs) And it's, it's amazing. (laughs) Like, because we all, like showed up here like at our rock bottom and we all just kind of like hold each other up through our own experience strength and hope and it's not like this forced like if you do this if you follow all these rules and you're saved it's like like I I feel you like I've been there I know it's really hard and um and this is what I did and it's um there's no like leadership there's no like you know, hierarchy, like it's like just a family group. And, um, and, um, you know, I, I need to work on, I admit, I still need to work on understanding my alcoholic relatives, understanding my parents, um, you know, frankly, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure like the whole world knows what's going on in the United States right now. Um, and that's been really challenging. Um, and I, you know, part of the tradition five, like it says by welcoming and giving comfort to families of alcoholics, that includes all families of alcoholics. And I, um, there's been a lot of like, like, I don't know. I mean, it's strange to me that there's discussion around like, what that means for, um, like, I'm for saying Black Lives Matter, like, in the rooms, when, like, I personally have felt, like, my identity has been politicized in the past, and it's, like, I can't, like, buy, like, a spiritual fellowship, and it was, like, it was traumatic, like, it sucked, and I left that fellowship, I, like, can't, I know I have friends who are queer and still in that religion, but like, I can't, I can't go back there. And so I feel for, I feel like we as a fellowship have a duty to really take a look at ourselves, at least here in the U S like, 
to truly be welcoming and, and take our own moral inventories. Like I'm taking a moral inventory of my own behaviors um, and my own like participation in um, a structure that like oppresses black folks in the U S. And so I, it's what this program has given me is um, I, when I, before I got here, like, and my partner told me like, you know, your lying is just a character defect. I was super defensive. I did not want to see it. I lost my mind. Like I really did. I could not accept any kind of criticism. Um, I couldn't look at myself and see where I'm harming others by, um, by staying in this like disempowered like state of mind and um what this fellowship has given me is like straight like y'all have loved me to the point where like I can love myself and know that it's okay to mess up and it's okay to be wrong sometimes and it's okay to like it's okay to have like these character defects. Like y'all have like loved me through it. Like, and then like, Oh my God, I know I'm that cra- that brand of crazy too. And it's such a gift to just be able to like love myself unconditionally without it being like, if you didn't follow these rules, you're going to hell. <laughs> like you're damned. You know, it's like, there's room for growth and there's room for um, just like authenticity and um yeah, like being of service has been incredible. Uh, working, uh, I'm the publicity chair for YHA. So when you go to our website, like um, that's my like service commitment. And um, it's been a really great like practice um, of just like practicing these tools with each other, like on a, on a committee where we like have a business, we have a goal, like, and it's to welcome like friends and family of alcoholics. And so, um, yeah, I'm like, I've timed me myself. So I'm seeing my time is coming up, but, um, I just want to say like to the newcomer, um, if you're here, <laughs> um, in this, in this setting, which is incredible, like good for you for finding this and being in this room right now. Um, please keep coming back. And if you don't hear your experience from one of us, like you'll, I, I mean, keep coming back. I, I didn't feel like I belonged for a really long time and it, slowly but surely I heard like my experience through all of you. And so, um, thank you for having this and I'm just going to wrap up. Yeah. So I guess we're just going to be open for shares now for the next 30 minutes.